Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic energy changes and in physical and chemical processes and today we are going to be looking at the enthalpy of neutralization. So we will see what enthalpy of neutralization is, we are going to define and then we pick a few examples of practice questions. So Heat of neutralization or enthalpy of neutralization is the heat evolved when the acid and a base react to form one mole of water. This is now the molar heat of neutralization. Note the key thing we are watching out is the water that is being produced. This is important, especially when we are calculating the moles. The moles are not the moles of the acid, not the moles of the base, but the moles of the water that is being formed. But you can use the information given on the moles of the acid, information given on the moles of the base to get the moles of the water. So alternatively, it is a heat evolved when one mole of hydrogen ions react with one mole of hydroxyl ions to give one mole of water. So that is what we call the molar heat of neutralization. Make sure you understand that definition. You can be taught to define it. So that is the ionic equation, the hydroxyl ions reacting with hydrogen ions to form water. Neutralization reactions are usually exothermic in nature, but you notice as we do uh, the applications, uh, uh, if it's going to be mentioned. So your answers should always be negative in the final answer. So they shall be determined by measuring the temperature rise produced when a known volume of acid is neutralized by a known volume of alkali. So you're always going to be given a volume of acid and volume of alkali. So you use that information to get the temperature change. So when you are reacting strong acid with strong acid with strong alkalis, notice it's always about 57 kilojoules per mole and higher than that of weak acids and weak alkalis. This is because strong acids and alkalis usually ionize fully in solution. So no heat is lost in the ionizing, the acid or the alkali, they already ionize themselves. But for neutralization involving weak acids and weak alkali, you notice that you expect around 52 kilojoules per mole. This is because for them, they do not ionize fully. So some of the energy or heat is used to ionize them. So that's why their, their theoretical values are usually lower than those of strong alkalis and strong uh, base uh, acids. So we are going to do a few example questions so and see what is the requirement when it comes to calculating. So given temperature 1 is 21 degrees Celsius and temperature 2 is 22 degrees Celsius and uh, temperature 4 is 34 degrees Celsius. Uh, volume of hydrochloric acid and volume of sodium hydroxide you have been given. A molarity of the solutions are both 2M. Calculate the heat of neutralization for the two reagents. So you will notice you have been given the temperatures. The first temperature is the temperature initially for hydrochloric acid, initial temperature of sodium hydroxide. And then when you mix the two solution and the reaction occur, this is the final temperature. So in such a situation, this is what we do when we are calculating the temperature change. So the temperature change will be for the final, which is 34.5, minus the initial, which will be 21, plus 22, divided by 2. So this is going to give us a temperature change of 34.5 minus 21.5, which will give us a change of 13. That is now 13 Kelvin, 13 degrees Celsius, either way. And then we have been given the specific heat capacity is 4.2. It's kilojoules per kilogram. Per Kelvin. So notice we are using kilogram now, so we need to change that. And then uh, the volume of the acid is 100 centimeters cubed. The volume of the base is 100 centimeters cubed. So the mass of solution, as you can see, hydrochloric acid is in solution state and the 
sodium hydroxide is in solution. So the total solution will be 100 centimeters cubed plus 100 centimeters cubed, which will give us 200 centimeters cubed. So if you were to convert this mass into uh, into this volume into mass, it will be one gram of water is in one centimeter cubed. What about 200 centimeters cubed, which gives us 200 grams? So remember our specific heat capacity is in kilogram. So we need to change this into gram. We know that 1,000 grams is equals to one kilogram. So what about 200 grams? That means it's 200 divided by 1,000, which gives us 0 0.2 kilograms. So when we write the formula, heat change is equal to the specific heat capacity times the mass of solution times temperature change is going to be 4.2 kilograms, kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin times the mass, which is now 0 0.2 kilogram times the change in temperature, which is 13. So this is going to give us uh, the 10.92 uh, kilojoules. So you've just been told to calculate the heat of neutralization. You haven't been told anything about molar heat of neutralization. So you go to the next question. Hopefully you get a question where you can calculate the molar. But that's how you calculate the heat change. Make sure you're able to see those steps. So one final question, and then we finish this session. So 250 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide or add in to 250 centimeters cubed of the acid. So we know now the volume of the total solution is 250 centimeters cubed plus 250 centimeters cubed, which is equal to 500 centimeters cubed. So the mass of the solution will be 500 grams. So in the calorimeter, the temperature of the two solutions was 17.5, which rose to 20. So change in temperature is going to be 20.1 minus 17.5, which gives us 2.6 degrees Celsius. Uh, calculate the standard enthalpy of neutralization. So we can use the specific heat capacity in this case as 4.2, like previously. Uh, kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. So the heat change is going to be uh, 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin times temperature change, which is 2.6 times the mass. So to convert these two kilograms is the same as 500 divided by 1000, which gives us 0 0.5. So heat change is going to be 5.46 kilojoules. So next, we need to calculate the moles, and in this case, of water formed. So you notice you have not been given the molarity of the acids and uh, base, so you give them one molar of sodium hydroxide and one molar of HCl. So this is 250 centimeters cubed and 250 centimeters cubed. You can go ahead and write the equation, but you notice the more ratio of HCl to sodium hydroxide is going to be one is to one. So then the, it requires them to have equal number of moles. As you can see, they have equal number of volumes. So if you were to calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide used in the reaction, it would be if one mole is in a thousand centimeters cubed, what about 250, which will give us one times 250 divided by 1000, which is the same as 0 0.025, 0 0.25, sorry. And then also for HCl, this is going to be 0 0.25, also 0 0.25. Remember, they have equal volumes. So we can comfortably say, so the more ratio of HCl to sodium hydroxide to water 
is also going to be 1. So if you write the equation, you notice it's sodium hydroxide plus HCl to form sodium chloride plus water. So you can see also the mole ratio of water is to 1. That tells you the number of moles of water produced is 0 0.25. Always ensure you get the moles of water and the accurate ones because sometimes you can have excess acids or excess bases. So you say if 0 0.25 moles of water are pro produces or this reaction produces 5.46 kilojoules of heat what about one mole because you have been asked to calculate the molar uh, so it's going to be one times 5.46 divided by 0 0.25 which will give us 21.84 and squares be kilojoules per mole so that's how you calculate the molar. The other one you are just being told to calculate the heat chain. Remember your final answer is negative. Otherwise, you won't get the final answer. So that's it for today. I hope you have been able to understand. So see you in the next lesson as we look for at another uh, end up here.